Well, hello. That's me again. It's August 25. Today is Thursday, and uh, let's get to our business. Uh, what you see here is a uh, um, SSBN, Strategic Missile Submarine of the Vanguard class of the Royal Navy, British Royal Navy, and Royal Navy has four of those. And these are the main carriers, so to speak, of the nuclear deterrent of the uh, uh, United Kingdom. They carry on them Trident D5, Trident 2 D5 missiles, which of course are American ballistic missiles, sea launch ballistic missiles. And at this stage, uh, um, United Kingdom and Royal Navy, which is the, the only platform which carries any kind of the strategic weapons in the United Kingdom, they have at their possession around 250 uh, nuclear warheads, but uh, as the nuclear posture states of the United Kingdom and statements of the number of the high positioned uh, military and political people there, essentially it will all come down to about 160 warheads and uh, that means also that already now, out of those four submarines of that class which the um, Royal Navy has, uh, they go out on the combat patrol being half loaded. Out of 16 tubes, they have only 8 loaded. And as I already stated, the future of the British nuclear forces will be around 160 warheads, maybe 120, because they really cannot afford that to start with. And uh, But if we go further, this is uh, Lee Strauss. She's an idiot, and she is a future uh, Prime Minister of Great Britain, and uh, she is accounted by uh, education. Nothing wrong with being accounted. It is an extremely important profession. You need to know what you're doing. And she was some kind of chief uh, financial officer for some kind of the business. And nothing wrong with that, too. The problem, of course, that uh, this idiot, Liz Truss, uh, and she came out and stated that, ma'am, she's so tough, she will push the button and basically, you know, just deploy the uh, British, whatever the number of the warheads will be by then, against, and you have guessed it already, against Russia. Well, not only she doesn't know geography, as we already know, but she also is not very strong on the strategic matters. And uh, the worst part of this, granted that when she was stating that she is so tough that she will push the nuclear button, even if it means the uh, global uh, annihilation, is the fact that uh, the audience which was present when she was pronouncing this cretinism of hers actually was cheering for her. Even if we say that, yeah, we have to understand that these were primarily those psychophants and bunch of uh, creeps who were uh, supporting her there in the audience, it is definitely very remarkable in, in the sense that at this stage, these people, most of them are cowards, most of them are not really mentally uh, adequate people, they're ready to support anything, whatever shows them to be tough and, you know, but it's, uh, as I already stated, it's the uh, fate of the former empire, which is now reduced to a uh, couple of small islands, r really, I mean, I'm not talking about much smaller other islets, uh, but I'm talking about the United Kingdom, and which still, you know, suffers those phantom pains of uh, greatness. And um, before uh, we go further, I have to remind you that uh, obviously the United States and Russia are tied together by the uh, START Treaty. START Treaty is Strategic uh, Weapons Limitation Treaty and it deals with primarily the uh, nuclear warheads and the uh, systems of the delivery. And in accordance to the latest extension, uh, we're looking at uh, extension of the START, which Biden administration, by the way, signed. We're looking at around 1,500, um, 1,550 warheads or uh, uh, independent reentry uh, vehicles on both sides of, of Russia and the United States. When you compare this to 255 um, 
warheads on uh, UK side and especially the fact that yeah uh, some people think that UK is totally independent in its nuclear posture well it is not but they want to say that they are but the point is that uh, obviously uh, both Russia and United States they dwarf uh, UK in terms of its uh, nuclear deterrent and by the number of the warheads and obviously in case of Russia, you also have thousands upon thousands of the tactical nuclear weapons, which could be carried by pretty much anything, from small missile ships to obviously submarines, and that's where we have to go in and do uh, some, uh, you know, minimal comparison. Here's the uh, Russian uh, newest class, Barry class strategic missile submarines and unless, uh, unlike uh, the first two hulls they carry actually 16 uh, 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 missile tubes the first two hulls i believe they carry 20 the first one certainly carries 20. they carry their um, bulawa missile russia already have five of them active and four of them in construction and there are another batch which is coming so as you can see yourself all this alone, this new submarine alone, or the class of submarines, already dwarfs anything what the Royal Navy has in terms of uh, its nuclear deterrent. And a single uh, body class carrying uh, 16, uh, 16 uh, tubes with their loaded weapons in it. And considering the fact that Sinova, or Bulava, pardon me, can carry between six and ten warheads, so the single uh, Russian submarine can wipe out the basically uh, anything uh, uh, and uh, what uh, Britain can offer in terms of its nuclear deterrent. But of course, let's not forget also this wonderful, good old uh, Delta IV of Project 667 BDRM, which carries also 16 uh, uh, torpedo, I mean, uh, missile tubes. Russia has seven of them operational, <coughs> and uh, it uh, also it carries the newest version of the Sinewa uh, missile, strategic missile, which also can carry between four to ten warheads. So uh, Russians do not really need to uh, uh, basically send their submarines uh, with the single, uh, uh, with the half of the tubes loaded with the uh, sea launch uh, ballistic missiles, and as you can see yourself, the, the, in terms of quantity alone, on the strategic missile submarines, Russia dwarfs United Kingdom, as is uh, as does obviously United States, and of course then you begin to look at the uh, missile carrying cruise missile carrying submarines which most of Russian submarines are nowadays, and those who are not are being uh, basically reconfigured as we speak right now, including a couple of the Shuka B, which is Project 971, known as Akula in the West, also being reconfigured to carry their uh, uh, cali caliber cruise missiles, and as you all know, that caliber missiles they could be both conventional and nuclear armed. So, here it is. Here's here we have this uh, pipsqueak of a country economically and militarily, and you have future uh, prime minister who is, uh, frankly, I already stated, she is an idiot, and she is ready to push the button. Is it posturing? posturing on her side most likely it is but will she if it comes down to it i don't know that's the problem with the western uh, political elites nowadays nowadays because you really don't know what to expect from them and um uh, there are the events, the way they're developing right now, and the way they present West with the challenges. Uh, you know, uh, there are enough uh, crazies out there, both in the United States and uh, in the Western Europe, who are, you know, people absolutely ir irresponsible. And if you look at people like Schultz, Macron, or this Liz Truss, or their uh, outgoing uh, Bojo, these are not mentally adequate people, literally, because when you look at them, you, you can easily see narcissists, you can also see either partial or complete psychopath, and what is the scariest of them all, none of those people understand what modern military and modern war is. 
and now to take at the uh, Mr. Schultz, who is completely uh, embroiled into, into this uh, Ukrainian quagmire, and he still believes that Ukraine is winning the war. And again, uh, the reason uh, he believes that Ukraine is winning, uh, winning the war because probably of the very low quality of the Western elites nowadays. I'm not sure there are good uh, BND people from the German intelligence anymore because primarily they look and fight, I don't know, whatever extremists or however they define them, but they're certainly not good at the strategic analysis. Neither is the modern day American intel services. So, and yes, they would buy and believe in anything you would tell them, you know, as long as it fits their agenda. But of course, their agenda doesn't work, and um, as uh, you even can get it uh, uh, from such uh, things like Forbes, which is hardly their um, really. Uh, anti-western or pro-russian or what have you uh, magazine and primarily it's the same also the uh, bunch of the economic shysters who know only stock market and wall street who do not understand what real economy is but even they uh, two days ago right that europe's markets and energy security disrupted by russia sanctions and this is a really first time i see in any kind of the reputable quote unquote in american or western way reputable uh, because actually there's nothing reputable about most of the publications in the western media today but when they stated this way you begin to think hey even they begin to get it you know and uh, look what they uh, write of course they write immediately uh, about the as you might uh, uh, have guessed it already about stock market these days the European stock market is the worst in the Western world. It is underperforming the US by nearly 10 basic points, down 22% a year to date, and blah 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 blah. And point is that actually uh, US stock market also is a fraud, it's all fiction. And uh, basically everything is based there on the constant printing of their uh, money, not even paper money, it's just electronically, they add zeros in the computers. And that is why they create this fiction, the visibility of the great, great, you know, economic situation, which of course is disastrous. But when you have even Forbes basically speaking about this and saying, you know what, it's not good, you know, and some of the investors, if you read this article, it's free on the online. Some of the investors begin to say that Europe now is the third world uh, country of the Western world. Well, uh, I have news for them. Western world is turning into the third world country or third world region. And it's, it, it doesn't uh, include only Europe, which is already, you know, pretty much on the slippery slope to economic irrelevance. And, uh, for example, Russia already written Europe off. But uh, United States also is not in much better shape, albeit United States has the means and resources to kind of right itself if need be, but that's the problem. I don't see anybody who knows how to do it in uh, the United States. But still, United States at least uh, can hit its own houses, you know, and, you know, there's still some kind of you know, supply of the gas, but Europe soon will be a won't be able to drive the cars. So this is it, and even Forbes says it is, you know, just look at this, how uh, uh, it all turns around, how the tables turned, you know, on the, on the Western Europe. And when we uh, go back to the economic matters, we can always take a look at uh, news of this nature that uh, uh, yeah, actually, uh, India, for example, uh, is cut crude imports by 50% and those crude imports from the United States and it buys discounted Russian crude. I like how they constantly uh, uh, try to uh, impress or, on people or create the impression that Russian discount is somehow is bad. It's not actually. It's a wonderful uh, market uh, uh, strategy by Russia because Russia makes a killing and I spoke about it in last video, uh, even selling it for the discount of about 70 uh, and selling its Urals oil at $70 
per barrel while having the cost of extraction and processing of this oil about 10 to 15 dollars per barrel and Russian uh, state budget is uh, based on 40 to 45 dollars per barrel so it's killing one way or another but you need to constantly present those news which are not really good about uh, uh, facts with their Western economies and how the rest of the world which is much larger economically than the combined West how it reacts to that and India is just one of of those uh, Russia's partners who really you know they already stated actually they pressed Russia that you know and um, they actually leading their uh, calls so to speak which is happening already of going completely uh, without US dollars in the trade between Russia and India Russia uh, Russia happily oblige, uh, obliges and uh, there you go and those news continue to pile and uh, you have to understand that this propaganda machine continues to work non-stop you know and uh, they need to present it that there are some uh, you know some uh, um, uh, how to say it, uh, successes if you wish, but when you even have Germany, which is on the front line of the uh, basically supporting Zelensky and criminal Kyiv regime and terrorism against Russia, when you have even Welt basically uh, writing three days ago that what kind of counteroffensive and they say that actually all those are dreams of Kiev and that, that, that uh, basically Ukraine has to accept the fact that it, it, well, how to put it, it lost half of the country at this stage and nothing could be done about this. And truth is, no matter what West does, uh, as I already stated, not, uh, not once, but many times, you have people, and again, uh, it's from the political top, who really do not understand what modern economy and modern war is and only now half a year after the uh, special military operation started they begin to come around and recognize that basically boy did we screw up because a special military operation is not just about russia fighting kiev regime no it is about russia fighting the combined west and combined West was absolutely assured in the first couple of months because they operate based on their fantasies and fictions and the alternative reality they create, especially by the means of the massive Western journalist core of the mainstream media, most of who are just absolutely morons and uneducated propagandists. And now, <laughs> when they talked themselves so much up, it is definitely uh, hurts to start, you know, falling down. And as I already stated, a reality is a bitch. It's gonna bite you so badly. It's gonna hurt like hell. And it is already happening. And to understand uh, how it manifests itself and why, how this, uh, basically, a Russian war with the combined West happens, we already can say that, for example, uh, look at this. Turkey, you have the Mr. Çavuş, uh, Glu, the foreign minister of Turkey, uh, speaking about the fact that, hey, Turkey is ready to talk to Syria. Yes, guys, uh, three days ago, or uh, two days ago, Turkey said there's no precondition uh, talking to Syria, and they would love to talk to Syria, actually. And the reason they would love to talk to Syria is, uh, let's roll it back to 2015, and uh, it's the start of Russia's uh, uh, basically operation in Syria upon the request of the legitimate Syrian government of Bashar al-Assad. And Turkey, of course, was on the other side of the issue at that uh, stage. And make no mistake, whenever I say Turkey uh, in Syria, I mean that there are still some legitimate, they have legitimate interests there. They have legitimate concerns and they have to be addressed. And, you know, of course, it's all about Kurds and Kurdish whatever workers party. And they are uh, viewed in Turkey as terrorists. Okay, leave, uh, we'll leave this political issue for now to Turkey. But evidently, Mr. Erdogan and his government and Turkey as a whole, they came around. They want to talk to Bashar al-Assad because they understand the solution of their problems will lie with Bashar al-Assad his legitimate government in Damascus and of course Russia which is behind <coughs> behind him and <coughs> 
Erdogan understands he's not stupid guy. He's a very shrewd politician. He understands that he needs to co communicate with Russia more and more. And it's basically the whole situation in Syria and in, the, in Idlib and with the Kurds uh, lies and solution of this situation lies with their negotiating and settling with <coughs> uh, Damascus and Moscow, of course. And as um, uh, you can, uh, you may know already, Turkey looks at America's illegitimate occupation of the Al Tanf area in Syria, and you know, United States they are just absolutely like you know, totally illegitimate. They just you know grab grab of the land there and prepare and terrorize them. That's what Al Tanf base do, does there. It prepares all kinds of the Islamic terrorists, Kurds, and what have you. So Turkey is now officially on the record <coughs> that it doesn't want those ba that base there and that Americans should leave. They will eventually because uh, their position was untenable already, uh, you know, a few years ago. Now it becomes absolutely untenable. So this is uh, one of those issues. Then, of course, we have the situation with the, uh, you know, those American wunderwaffe thinking, which is, uh, for example, even uh, Swiss, uh, they have doubts. Uh, about buying those uh, wonderful, overrated, over tremendously expensive, and still not good uh, American fighters, which are F-35, and while you can see all those recognizable people like Greens, all kind of the liberal people in uh, Switzerland, you know, uh, trying to stop this deal, uh, and uh, that there is the funny thing uh, here because that even. If those people who would otherwise will be will not be considered normies in normal country, they actually use a very good uh, uh, and very uh, I mean good just justification and uh, because as they said said uh, uh, stop F-35 coalition which includes Switzerland Social Democratic Party the Green Party and anti-military group has argued that the US made attack jets are too expensive and not a good fit for the defense focused Swiss Air Force. Military neutrality is enshrined in Switzerland constitution, so the country's air force is limited mostly to patrolling the skies in its own region. But we have to understand that, of course, F-35 is really, even when you buy it, you never own it. The United States can shut it down any minute it wants, and basically you can operate this, well, it's a lame duck, it's not good fighter but even to operate it you have to be constantly on the customer support from the united states and that means basically you become completely dependent on whatever is happening with the f-35 and most of the, the sales of f-35 are due to the twisting hands and the stupidity of for example western politicians such as in the netherlands so and well what have you and this is the reality which europeans have to live with i don't know if the F-35 will end up in Switzerland, it might as well happen, and but it doesn't matter actually, and uh, at this stage practically every single uh, institution or tradition or habit of how we view the Western world today is gone out of the window. It's the same as, as Swiss neutrality. I don't know how really neutral the Swiss are anymore, so it's like, you know, Whatever they are, they are still in the Western fold, and uh, no matter what they do, they will either rise or fall with the Western world. And the fall, the latter, is most likely scenario. So Switzerland is the part of the Western world, and it will inevitably be subverted by the United States, and they probably will buy those F-35, which are <coughs> no good anyway for any kind of the serious uh, military operations. And that brings us to this very, very strange, I would say, and not bizarrely strange in the sense that if you look at this bomb under the wing of the Russian Su-34, this photo is from 2015, with the start of Russian operations against ISIS and other America-supported terrorist groups and uh, British-supported, and the uh, writing on that um, bomb is re reads for Paris. It was uh, after November uh, 2015 Paris uh, 
uh, terrorist acts, which saw not only Paris, actually, there was Paris and other places in uh, France where Islamic terrorists, I mean, basically slaughtered hundreds of people uh, and maimed even more. And the Russians were writing uh, very sincerely at that time for Paris, seeing uh, the West as the one in which Russians were in the same boat fighting the real evil of ISIS. How times change. Here we are seven years later. Nowadays, Russians don't give a damn what happens in Paris. If it go, explodes completely. And uh, this is the, basically the result of the policies uh, <clears throat> which West was conducted against Russia. And at this stage, as I already stated, Russians have written off the Europe as such. Will Russians talk to Americans? Yes. It's noblesse oblige, and which also not only tells you that you have to uh, be kind of behaving yourself when you are in the higher league, or the higher class, but it's also what is called the position is forcing you to communicate with uh, Americans uh, on the issues of the strategic uh, stability or whatever is left of it, because you talk to the strongest guy in the pack. Europe doesn't mean, uh, mean anything anymore for Russia, and that is why... Uh, uh, the, for Germany, for example, there is a last chance to check if it is in any way uh, or, uh, some it has possesses some kind of the sovereignty, but which I doubt it it does, and I doubt it will happen. But hey, there is uh, Nord Stream too if they want to get the energy they need to survive. If not, which is most likely, and they're not going to turn it on, so I think so that Germany is done as economic power, and so is Europe. And I will be making special video on that issue, but uh, here's what I wanted to tell you today about those kind of latest news. And um, as always, guys, if you like what I do, please subscribe and support me on Patreon. And uh, this is your Thursday primer, so to speak. And I will be talking to you later, guys. Bye-bye.